is on the throne, he's in control, he's never let down his, his sight and his vision on his people. God is awesome, is awesome, is awesome. Turn to the book of Joshua. Stand for the reading of the word. The book of Joshua. God is doing something great amongst us. Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 1. This is actually the introduction. <laughs> Joshua. Chapter 1. God is so awesome to us. He takes care of us even when we're not even taking care of ourselves. God has got us. And I thank Him for that. You got your Bible say amen? Mm -hmm. You don't say oh me? Alright. Let's turn it back here. Yeah, here we go. We got to keep on by here. That was, we had some good songs picked up too. <laughs> That's kind of hard for seeing all these with uh, just a guitar. So we're gonna we're gonna start a new series today. I'm not sure exactly how long it's gonna go, but a new year and a new mindset. A new year and a new mindset. Let's 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 turn to the book of Joshua. Just read a few verses to start with. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. Then the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Y'all say dead. Dead, dead and gone. Y'all say dead and gone. Dead and gone. Now therefore, arise. Y'all say get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Go. Look at somebody say get up. Get up. Get up. Over this shore, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the high heights, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There, there shall be not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide an inheritance unto the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Oh, be thou strong and very courageous. He just keeps telling them. He keeps, he keeps saying, come on, buddy. You can do this. You can do this. Be strong. Be strong and very courageous and thou best deserve to do it. according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper with us wherever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. And just in case he didn't get the message, have I not commanded you be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Stretch your hands forth this way. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you are alive and well, God, and you are on your throne. I know, God, there's nothing that's happening to us right now, God, that's beyond your capability to see it, to acknowledge it, and to handle it. I ask you right now, God, to help us, Lord, to put it in your hands, and then trust you right now. This is a new year. God, not only do we need a new attitude, we need a new mindset. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch in the name of Jesus we pray. The church said, <coughs> Amen. It's all said to me, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. Good morning. And God in Christ. You know, a student bursts into his professor's office and said, Professor! I don't believe I deserve this F grade that you've given me. To which the professor replied, I agree, but unfortunately, it is the lowest grade the university will allow me to avoid. In other words, if I give you lower, I would have gave you lower. Amen. Mindset. How many understand really what a mindset is? Mindset is more than just an attitude. 
attitude is, it's a mental attitude, but if something inside of you that determines how you interpret what is going on around you. Your mindset determines your attitude. Your mindset determines how you see things. It is a filter in which everything in life comes to you and how you respond to every situation. It's made up of your beliefs, your feelings, and your values. Think about this now. Your feelings, your beliefs, and your values. Now, now, it's easy to look back over 2023 and expect 24 to be more of the same. Amen? <coughs> How many in here has looked over the calendar and said, well, it, it's going to be the same thing. I, I, I wasn't in too much to sleep last night because I was going to say, hey, let me see if I can get that. I don't want to lose this. This looks too good. Praise God. Aren't you glad for technology? Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, this technology right here was great. The only problem was I was seeing it through foggy, foggy eyes. Amen. So we're going to do this just so we can't lose this. We're going to, we're going to do this a little bit different. All right. There we go. Ready? Aim. <laughs> Fire. There we go. Words kill. Think about it. We say sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's the biggest lie we've ever told anybody. Words hurt. Words break people up. Words break up homes. Words cause us to lose our jobs. It breaks up friendships. Words are terrible. At the same time, they're good. So words kill. Words give life. They're either poison or they're fruit. You choose. Proverbs 18 and 21. Now we're going to get there. Here we go. It's easy to look back over 2023 and expect 2024 to be the same thing. Matter of fact, I've heard people say just more of the same. I said, how's your new year going? Just more of the same. <laughs> How many's heard this lately? Just a, a different day but the same old mess. How many said that? It's the same old, it's a different year, different day, but it's the same old mess. You know, it's the anger made me so bad when I was working at the mountain. Well, I asked somebody, how's it going? They go, I'm just pulling the hate, man. Just pulling the hate. I used to hate to hear that, because it was implied that as soon as this day took with, I'm gone, and I can care less about this place. But I can assure you that whatever you're expecting is going to come out your mouth. You can say one thing, you can do one thing, but, it, but if you're thinking it, eventually it's going to come out of your mouth. And here it is again, Proverbs 18, 21. Your tongue has the power of life, and it has the power of death. Again, it is one of your, it actually shows your mindset. But not only does it show your mindset, it feeds your mindset. So because of that, remember what I said about your mindset. Your mindset is actually your beliefs colliding with your feelings, colliding with your values. And so when all this hits together and you start talking it, you start a, 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 a cognitive loop in your head that actually now you're self-prophesying. And as you self-prophesy, things get worse and worse and worse. And God knew this. He knows what happens to us. That's why he initially, from the very beginning, as he's talking to Joshua, he knows that this, this could happen to Joshua. So he starts talking to him. So the byword of today is overwhelmed. Anybody, anybody noticed the world today? Anybody watch the news lately? You, you can watch the news for five minutes, and if you didn't have God, it can overwhelm you. You can say, well, let's see what's happening over in Germany. Let's see what's happening over you know, in Russia. Let's see what's happening over in China. And you find out no matter where something's happening, it affects us. <laughs> the good old USA 
And anything that happens in the USA affects the world and vice versa. So it's very easy to get a will. Now that word of will means to languish. It means to, to cover over, to fail, to faint, to become feeble. It also means to hide yourself, to swoon. Now, again, this is a day we live in. The Bible says in the last days, and actually it didn't look like it has in since last year or so, last year or so. Now this is such coming such to pass. It says men swooning away or expiring with fear and dread and apprehension and expectation of the things that are coming on the world for the very powers of the heaven shall be shaken and caused to talk. Now think about this thing. The world we live in today, think of what's happening. The major powers of the world, these major powers of the world, they're tottering right now. You read headlines, China's uh, economy is about to collapse. You look over here and you see uh, Russia's economy is collapsing. America's economy is collapsing. Then you see North Korea is ready to start a war and they're aiming at the United States and they're trying to take out South Korea. You just keep looking, 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 and it's so easy to be overwhelmed. Another version, <coughs> the message. And the war and everything all over the world in a panic. The wind not got of them by the threat of doom, the powers that be. Wow. Look at this. From the end of the earth, what I try to do, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Psalm 61 and 2. Wow. That word heart means your mind. Listen carefully. It means your mind, your will, your emotions. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Has your mind been tottering lately? Has it been overwhelmed? I've noticed, you know, when I were to proper and gamble, I used to have a little day time. We didn't have all this stuff, you know, all this modern stuff. And so every morning, the engineer, we get together, and I had a day time. But right then, I thought I was hot stuff, and I had a day time. But you bend off the page and break it off, you know, as you do them each day, and all these the hours and all this stuff. And, and I mean, I, I get there in the morning, I hear all the things that's going on, and I write it down in my day timer, and I put hours by whatever needed to be done on certain hours. And the next day, I would come in and spend the first 10 minutes transferring all the stuff that had to be done yesterday to be done that day. And so on. Every day, I was filling up the stuff that was supposed to be done the day before, the day before, the week before. Why couldn't I get all this stuff done? It's because it seemed like we stayed so busy putting out fires. Every time I turn around, something's down over here. Something's not working. We've got an air washer going down. We've got a PLC over here that's disrupted. We've got chillers that are down. You know, and so uh, uh, a black hole chillers. All stuff's going down. And so that stuff kept up production. So guess what? No matter what kind of projects I had, they always went on hold because I was too busy putting out fires. And so sometimes I'd go in and I couldn't even think. Because I, I had a little Cushman truck and I put a little Cushman truck and I loaded up tools that I needed. So I got through these projects and before I could even get the truck loaded up, I had to unload it and load it with something else because I was always having to <clears throat> put out a fire, so to speak. Y'all guys understand that. You're always putting out fires, even in their own lives. You're, trying, you, you're working with one child, you think you got that one child handling. Here comes another child with another problem. Or, just like last week, I had that sickness, and, and by, by Tuesday, Linda was waiting on me hand and foot. She was such a good nurse. And by Tuesday, Linda says, I'm not feeling so good. By Wednesday, she's going, Ugh, oh, did your throat hurt? I said, No, my throat didn't hurt. She said, Mine hurts bad. 
And by Thursday, she not only had what I had, the creepy crud, but she had strep throat. And so it was just constant. Something always. You're thinking you get to do one thing, and you get overwhelmed. Your mind. Your will. Your emotions. The word overwhelmed again means to faint, to fail, to swoon. But it says, when this happens, Lord, leave me. Leave me. Y'all say leave me. That word leave me not only means to point me in the right direction. It means even if I don't have the strength, God will pick me up. He will pick you up. And he will take you to the rock. Thank God for that. There's a lot of people saying they're going to help you, but a certain day they're going to do so much, but God will pick you up. And he'll take you to the rock. God will do something for you that nobody else can. So leave me to the rock, that solid refuge. And I'll tell you what, it's so much higher than we are. Those are higher than we are, it's higher than whatever's bringing us down. So now, here we go. Here's Joshua. Let's talk about Joshua for a while. Sometimes we can get, we get so overwhelmed, we forget how, how, how big God is, don't we? When David was standing before Goliath, they had been there 40 days and 40 nights, and Saul couldn't take him. Saul was the big man in Israel. Why couldn't Saul take Goliath? Because they spent 40 days and 40 nights telling God how big Goliath was. David comes along, bring his, bring his brother's lunch. He was not even a warrior. But he came along and he made the difference because while they were telling him, how big, telling tell God how big their, their giant was, they just said, hold on just a minute. Why don't we try something a little different here? Let's try telling our giant how big God is. Amen. And we can learn that. Tell God just how look, look, tell our problems. Look, here's how we got a big God. He's got this. God If there was ever a person overwhelmed, it was Joshua. God called him to take Moses' place. Whoa! There were some big shoes to fill. While Joshua was held captive by Pharaoh, Moses went and stood in front of Pharaoh and said, Let my people go! While Joshua was still making bricks, Moses was bringing the plagues through God's power and God's authority. That we had seen, while they were being chased by Pharaoh's army, it was Moses that stood up and said, y'all be still, be still, and know that he's got, he's got this, and he holds up his rod and God parts the sea. And they go and dry ground. Man, can you imagine having to fill those big shoes? I don't think I'd want to do that. Amen? So, so it's overwhelming him. And then, he said to take this, all this land back. Look, so there's a big job to complete. So it's right now, just breathing normally in all the mess we're in. And just being able to relax is a big job. Amen? Sometimes it's just hard just to be calm. He might have big shoes to fill. He had a big job to complete, and both of what he had to do seemed very, very, very impossible. But I find it looked too big for him to have to handle this. Too big without God. So again, y'all say this. Think about your biggest problem right now. Don't look at anybody when you do this. Think about your biggest problem right now. And say, problem! Say it. Say, problem! Oh, God. You're no match. You're no match. For my big God. My big God. Say it again. You're no match. You're no match. For my big God. God is awesome. Give him a hand clap. <laughs> so, here he is. It's during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. Back when we had the Sunday night services, 
I remember one night we got in here, and it was pitch dark outside. And I said, I want you to go back and turn off all the lights. And they turned off the lights. Everybody got real quiet. And I had an itty bitty flashlight with a just about dead battery. And I held it up. And I said, Can everybody see this? And everybody said, Yes. I said, See, you don't think you're big enough to make a difference. You don't think that you've got a lot of takes. You may feel exhausted and feel like your batteries are draining. But in the darkness that surrounds you, you still are brighter than that darkness. And God can do something with you. I remember that very clear that night. That was an awesome, awesome night. So here's Joshua. He's overwhelmed. How are we overwhelmed? Number one, when you focus on the past. PTSD, critical incident stress, bad childhoods, bad marriages, deaths, all these things causes us to focus on the past. We keep our eyes so peeled on what has happened. Sometimes, it's a, sometimes a reminder of a difficult past overwhelms our emotions. And as it overwhelms our emotions, it controls how we're responding. When your everything's going good, your thoughts are in the front of your brain. But as soon as you begin to get overwhelmed by your emotions, now your thoughts go to the back of your brain. And back here, you're on autopilot. Back here is some self-preservation. And now your heart's beating hard. And you begin to wonder, what if, what if, what if? Can we do this? I, I can't believe this. Oh, oh. And you're trying to figure out how to make this stuff happen. You get so overwhelmed that you even hear somebody say, what's going on, bro? Well, I'm not thinking clearly. Honestly, you're not. Because you're overwhelmed. And it's all back here. And you're just trying, just to trying to stay alive. See, <clears throat> you can't change your past, but you can change how you respond to it. Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, verse 2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Let's think about it for a minute. Moses being dead was not just the thought that Moses was dead. But the way Moses did things, the way things happened, <laughs> when Moses was in charge, that we felt comfortable when Moses was in charge, we felt secure when we had Moses, and now <clears throat> we don't have that. We're not even sure what's going to happen in the future. It's just as Moses my servant, the one that you believe in, the one that you trust in, the one that brought comfort, is dead. Now get up. Get up. Get up. When you get overwhelmed, you may not go to your knees physically, but inside, you go to those knees. You stop moving forward because you're not sure anymore. You stop letting God take control because you're still not sure anymore. And you wonder, God, are they stepping in the right spot? Focus on the past is a bad, bad thing. <clears throat> you can also be overwhelmed when you don't feel prepared. He says, get up. Go over this Jordan, you and all the people. Wait a minute, God. I wasn't the one that brought him here. <clears throat> How many ever had to clean up somebody else's mess? Mm. From the sound of the things, many times. <clears throat> I, I remember a part of game. I remember a town. I remember the places. Many, many times, the reason I was busy putting out fires is because I maybe not even started the fire. Somebody else started the fire. Somebody else made a mess. And they 
just said, can you please go clean up your mess? I'm not going to go. Where have been? Can you please take care? Because somebody has dropped the ball, and we need you to go put the ball back up and put it in play. See, he didn't feel prepared for what he was getting ready to do. And when you feel out of control, he was ready to follow Moses. He was ready to take care of that. But now the future is unknown. And if you're not careful, our futures are unknown. And it's scary. When I listen to some of those guys talk, when they're talking from the White House or when they're talking from any of these other guys talking from, from behind the podium, even the candidates talking, it honestly sometimes makes my chest feel tight. Especially when I hear the same old lies told, the same old election cycle, the same things told every time, and we call for it. We're going to do this, and we're going to do that, we're going to make sure, well, you haven't done it all these years, why do you think you're going to do it now? Well, now it's just, the, the lies are newer, they're fresher, they're still lies. So, it makes you wonder. And then you think about your family, and you wonder about their sicknesses. I had no idea last week that I was going to be that sick. And I had definitely had no idea that my wife <clears throat> was going to get a strep throat along with what I had. Things in front of us fell out of control. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now rise. Get up. Go to Jordan. Down all these people. And go. Take this land. And also, you get overwhelmed when you have no explanations. Sometimes there's no warning or an explanation. You just get led to overwhelm. You know, I think people ask me, what? They sit down in the office with me. And they'll go, you know what? I'm so overwhelmed. Why did life turn out this way? I had everything so planned. I had it all figured out. Why did life turn out this way? Or, <clears throat> I hear them say things like, why do I feel forced to have to deal with things that I'm not prepared to deal with? Or I have a plan to deal with? How do I handle this? That's Joshua. <clears throat> so now let's go let's go talk about Joshua. Overwhelmed. I won't keep you much longer. This is just the introduction. Here it is. We're gonna do it again. Joshua, my servant, is dead. Go take the land. Do you know that Moses is mentioned? six times in the first nine verses. Kind of hard to forget that man anyway. But now God's expecting him to stand up and take Moses' place. And so he speaks to Moses six times in the first nine verses. And in the whole book, he speaks to Moses 57 So it's kind of like this, something's happened and I can't change it. Not only can I change it, I can't get it out of my mind. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Yeah. Something's happened that you did not like. Something's happened that you did not plan for. Something's happened that you did not. If you had another way about it, you'd have done it different. But you can't. And not only can you not do it different, you cannot get it off the table. There's Moses. <laughs> wow. Been thinking about your past, but Moses keeps getting brought up. It's very easy to look what God has done in the past and think, I can't move forward. So there's a danger looking back, but there's also a danger of standing still. God told Joshua not to get up and go over this land. And we're going to go through this a lot more in the next few weeks. But it says, every place the soul of your foot touches or will tread on, I've given it to you. Fulfilling the promises of God requires that we walk by faith. 
And then there's a danger. I love this. Getting knocked down in life is a given. Getting up and moving forward is a choice. How many ever heard of Zig Ziglar? Great guy, great guy. You know, I saw him at his last conference, very last conference since the NC State in the auditorium. There was Colin Powell. There was a lot of, a lot of Rudy uh, uh, was there. A whole bunch of people was there. Just some higher hitters were there. And Zig Ziglar, that very powerful man that I listened to for years. He was always on fire and always jumping around and having a good time when it comes to his time. <clears throat> this young woman walked over to him and said, come on. And she took him <laughs> by the hand and found it was his daughter. And that powerful man that led so many to Christ and led so many to the victory walk across the stage. And when he got to his spot, she sat him down. And she said, he wants me to tell you the police part of him. He's had a stroke. But he's not letting it stop him. And she gave him the mic. And I let them out with some of the most awesome gems that just flowed. And what made it flow even more was knowing that he could have been home taking it easy. He heard it, but he refused to keep it bottled up inside. Even though his daughter had to help him walk across the stage, she had to set it down, and when he got through, she had to go get him back up and take him back and sit him down. That place went ballistic. Because he had a message. And it's getting knocked down in life is a given. But getting up and moving forward is a choice. Wow. There's a danger of giving up. No man should never stand before you on the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. It seems that they may have given up. It's the whole place. When he said, I will not leave you or forsake you, it means I will not leave you physically, and I will not forsake you spiritually, mentally, emotionally. I'm here all the way through. I'm bringing shalom. Everything you need, I got it. Know that you got it. And finally, the danger of falling short. Be strong and good courage, for the, to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. The inheritance is the land that God promised. Now, one more, and I'm going to pick it up next week. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou shalt that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. But then thou shalt make thy life prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Our job is to learn the word and to lean on the word. He said, I want you to meditate on it day and night. What does it mean to meditate on a day and night? It means to mutter under your breath. It means to talk to yourself. You say, well, people think I'm crazy. I promise you, there's more people thinking you're crazy than you ever imagined. Period. There's 20% of people that you know will know never like you. Ever. There's another good percentage that will always be at odds with you. No matter what you do, they're going to be at odds with you. Matter of fact, the Bible says, well, only him that is it. There's that peace with everybody. But everybody likes it. Well, one to him. That means it's people with it. So meditation means it's actually healthy self-talk. We always talk to ourselves. But healthy self-talk builds faith. 
Matter of fact, the difference in healthy meditation and unhealthy meditation, reverse meditation, is worry. Unhealthy self-talk. It deteriorates your faith. I'm stupid. I should have known better than this. Man, I am so sorry. I wish I'd never been born. Man, I don't know why I'm trying to even do anything now because I already messed up everything. It's terrible. Guess what? You are killing yourself. You are setting your mindset. You are adjusting your mindset because if it comes out of your mouth, it goes back into your ear. If they come out here, they hear by the Word of God. So the Word of God is going to my ears is going to build faith. Me talking junk to myself is going to, going to also going to destroy my faith. Quit talking negative to yourself about everything. It's never going to work. I shouldn't have done this. Blah, 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 blah. Take God's Word and talk to new breath. All the time. This week's challenge. Then again. Hold on. Thought I had everything fixed. And of course. Y'all said praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Matter of fact, I even did it. I must have did it in my sleep. Because I thought it was all working fine. That's what I get for thinking. If <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you what Benny was saying right now. He said, a doctor warns you, think it's hazardous to your health. All right, here we go. This week's challenge. Get ready. Then anyway, go ahead. Refuse to live in the past. You got to do a forward-looking mindset. Remember, your mindset is your beliefs combined with your feelings, combined with your values, and it changes the way you interpret and respond to situations. So you've got to watch your mindset. Refuse to live in the past. Just learn the lessons from the past, but don't live in the past. Reach forward to God's promises. Reach forward. But you got to reinforce your life in the present. Now. Now. Oh, well, you really tell you, I tell guys and gals that suffer from PTSD, or critical instant stress, or PTS, I tell them all the same thing, and I tell myself this all the time too. If I find myself starting to get overwhelmed with what's going around me, I do breathing exercises that I teach everybody to do breathing exercises. And then I say this to myself. And all these guys and gals I work with, like I'm saying it all the time, and that is, I am here, not yesterday, not tomorrow. I'm not in shoulda, coulda, woulda. I'm not in what if, what if, what if. I'm right here, right now. And I'm safe. Y'all say it with me. I am here and I'm safe. Say it again. I am here and I'm safe. Say this with me. I'm not in yesterday. I'm not in yesterday. I'm not in tomorrow. I'm not in tomorrow. I am here. I'm here. And I'm safe. In God's promises, protect me. Say that. In God's promises, protect me. Protect me. This week, when you get drugged back in the past. Say, no, no, I'm going to learn the lessons and I'm not living there. I'm taking lessons from it, but I'm not living there. Go forward to the promises to say, I'm not there yet, so I'm waiting on God to help me. I am here. I'm reinforcing my present. I am here. I am safe. And God's promises protect me. I was awakened yesterday by text. God said it. Here's all the words. I'm here. I'm safe. God's power and promises to protect me. Later on that day, I got another text from somebody. just popped up. I'm here. I'm safe. God's promises.
Years ago, there was a young lady who had died tragically. Her and her boyfriend, they were all gone. And I was doing the funeral because I'd been with this little girl. She was a little bitty thing. Now she had children, two children, but she was a little bitty thing. But I met her and I worked with her. Matter of fact, from the time she was born, and I was in that church. And I'd already told the family, I said, Y'all need to be ready for today because this is going to be a tough day. And they go, We got this, I said. You say that now, but you just wait. And they go, No, we got us. Okay. So I prayed with them and I walked out. <clears throat> and on the way up to the pulpit, the other preacher looked at me and he said, I don't know how you're doing this after knowing what happened to your daughter. And I hadn't even thought about that until he said that. So I go up the pool pit and I'm sitting in one chair and the preacher's sitting in another chair. And when family comes in, they start playing Tim McGraw my little girl. And the whole place goes to pieces. I'm not talking about just crying and wailing. And I wasn't thinking about that girl I knew since she was born. All I think about was Bethany. <clears throat> my little girl. And so I'm sitting in my chair. If nobody had known it, they just thought I had my eyes closed. But if you watched my hand, I was counting in my breathing. The whole time the song was gone, I was counting in my breathing. And after I was counting in my breathing, I would say to myself, I'm here. I'm safe. God's promises to be there. And I kept counting. And I was the first one that had to get up. And when I got up, I said, okay, God, it's me and you, mainly you. And when I got up, I felt the greatest calm in the middle of the storm. And God protected me. And it was awesome. I got down, the other pastor got up, and they got down, they came and they did what they were going to do. And I remember going to my car, and I got stopped, I don't know how many people going, how'd you do that, how'd you do that, how'd you do that, and I was thinking, will y'all please quit asking me that. I just kept going, God, 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 and when I got in my car all the way home, I got all the pieces. But at that moment, if you could see me in that chair, I was breathing, my technique, breathing techniques, I was doing that, and I was saying, I'm here, I'm safe. God's promises protect me. And I'm going to lay down if I help some of y'all or help some of my family, or I start thinking about things that's gone on in the past and I can't sleep. I do the breathing exercises. And then I say to myself, I'm here, I'm safe. Not in the past, not in the future. Not depressed, not full of anxiety. I'm here. I am safe. God's promises protect me. And usually, within a couple of minutes, I go to sleep. I'm not telling you something that I read in the book. I'm telling you something I knew just about every day of my life. God will help you. We got a big job ahead of us this year. Moses is dead. The way they used to handle this is gone. It's gone. We got a whole different territory out there. A whole different mindset out there. We got to make sure our mindset's right here so we can handle the mindset out there. Next time you're going to beat yourself up, talk about how you're sorry, you can't do this and that. I want you to start saying God's word. And then say this too. I'm here. I'm safe. God's promises protect me. Everybody stand up. <clears throat> every head bow, every eye closed.
understand that life has a way of coming at you in a way that you're not prepared for. You think you're prepared for it, and then you hit it, you hit it with a lot of ifs, and it should have, could have, would have. <clears throat> the thing that you depended on, the thing that you were trusting, the thing that you thought was going to get you through, your Moses is dead. And God wants you to get up, to keep moving forward. He's got a plan. Don't you think that it took God by surprise when Moses, Moses died? God took Moses from the people and laid him down to rest and hid him from the people and from the devil. <laughs> God was very much aware. And God knew what he was doing when he raised up Joshua. Because his mindset was a warrior mindset, but at the moment <coughs> it was going south. And so he had to be, God had to reassure him and to teach him to get back on his feet and get that warrior mindset. I'm telling you, no longer is the church as normal, church as usual. No longer is it everybody's just waiting to swim over God's people. It's going to come to a point where we're going to be considered and already considered by some as a problem to this new mindset. We're considered germs by some people. I've heard it, I've seen it, I've read it. They were mentally unstable. And they were believing in something that don't exist. I read it, I see it. But God's got us. God's got us, God's got us, God's got us. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're going through, get that mindset. Let that mind that was in Christ be in you. Let God touch your beliefs, your feelings, your values, your mindset. Help him, God, help say, God, help me to learn to interpret and respond to situations that please you in a way that pleases you. That's all, praise. That's all. That's all. First off, I'm going to ask anybody here to say, I've been losing my mindset. Not my mind, my mindset. Just like Joshua. And I need God to help me get it back in order. Nobody looking around. Just put their hand up. I, I find my mindset getting snatched. Maybe you're here right now and you're going, I've just been hit hard by all of life right now. It's just my Moses is dead and I, I'm finding a hard time to get back up and move forward. If I'm talking to you right now, with well, nobody looking around, we put their hand up. Yeah, my Moses is dead. I'm, I'm having the hardest time getting back up. Let's pray together. First off, let me tell you something. God saw those hands. God saw those hearts. God saw your spirit. And just like with Joshua, he's telling you the same thing he told Joshua. Arise. Get back in the game. It's coming right now. Everybody pray with me. Father, Father, I love you. I thank you. I thank you. For your grace. For your grace. And your mercy. And your mercy. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. That you've given us you've given a, us warrior a warrior mindset. mindset. Help, us Help us to take it back, take it back. And, to and to stand strong in what you call us to do. And we thank you for it. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. we're yours. We rededicate ourselves. We dedicate ourselves. Touch our mindset. Touch your mindset. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This morning I was thinking, 
you know, as I kept hearing them, we're sick, we're sick, we're sick, and we're not going to be in the bed. And, and honestly, I, I, I was thinking, Lord, it, who is going to be here? And this is what I'm trying to preach from last a month, and, I, and it's finally starting to get a chance. And, and, the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me. I said, and I said was, I'm not sure he was going to be here because he'd been sick too. I said, get a guitar, and Betty's here, we're going to go up, and then we're still going to have church. Because I heard the Lord say, Watch your mindset. Don't let the circumstances dictate you this morning. You preach, you got one, or you got a thousand. Because God's got something special. And He's doing something special. Trust me. And I said, Yes, Lord, I trust you. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. After we say the Lord's Prayer, I'm going to ask Brother Doug to dismiss us in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses.